with trading cards and more back with another video today we have another mail day monday i got 29 packages to get through some cards i'm picking up and whatnot um looks like i left my knife in the other room might end up having to go grab that real quick i will be right back let me know if you're here i'll shout you out And we're back. All right. First card today. What do we got here? Justin A. What's going on? Oh, they shipped that like that. Unreal. Unreal. We got a Lafreniere Young Guns card. Um, I've been picking these up. I know he hasn't really done anything yet, but pretty big prospect this year. Um, it's just get, season's just getting started. I just got into hockey. Um, we'll see how these do. Uh, the PSA 10s, the cheapest ones are like 1500 or so um, at, at the sold price. I'm getting these for about 250 to 270 So I've been picking up the canvas because it's more rare than the base Young Guns card. And it's um, easier to grade from what I can tell. Uh, the regular cards have issues. Just the darkness of the card. The uh, corners and edges and stuff. So, flipping cards. What's going on? Got sports cards. What's going on? Darren C. What's up? So yeah, I'm picking those up at 250 to 270. I think I've got four or five of them now. And then the base, I have I think five of them. So I'll send those ten off here at the end of the week. Um, I'll probably do a few. I'll probably do a few bulk orders as well. Um, so, did I forget to turn my darn notifications off? One second, guys. Alright, second package here. If you guys don't mind leaving a like on the video. I need to get some of these. these I can get these for free, but I just use the bubble mailers that I, that I buy uh, for, like, I don't know, 15 cents a piece. Um, we got a Kareem. This is a hook shot. His first hookshot card, I believe. Uh, this is a 79 tops. And I'm getting these for like $15 to $20. Ungraded. Pretty much near mint condition. Maybe near mint to mint. I've gotten a few of them. Um, I think I sent some off to PSA already. So. Yeah, I really like the I, I like the creams. And I think that's a cool, you know, pr pretty affordable card at $20. Um, okay, this is my ComC order. This came pretty fast. <clears throat> I picked up some Adam Fox. He's on the Rangers as well. Uh, with the Frenier and Kayako. And they're not looking too great, but his, his rookie, or his Young Guns card is like $130 to $150 in a PSA 10. <clears throat> I got these for pretty much $8 to $11 a card. Um, Mad Sweeper, what's going on? Appreciate the feedback. So yeah, I just snagged everyone I could. And they didn't have actual images of the card. It was just basically stock photo. Um, so I just kind of took a gamble on these. But I figured because they're not really, he's not really like super expensive or anything. Uh, they might not be like, you know, pick through or whatever. And I can kind of go through and pick through them. Uh, main issue with this card was the back edge right up here has some chipping sometimes so these are looking pretty solid um, from what I can tell I think I picked up about 30 of them um, and there's a Peyton Krebs I got one of those probably for like 15 bucks but yeah these are looking pretty darn solid so I'll have to look those over like I said the PSA 10s right now are um, I think around 130, 150, and they were like 100 bucks not you know, long ago. So possibly some upside potential there. Who knows? All right. Oh, and then I got some canvas ones as well because the canvas ones were really cheap as well, and these are so much more rare than the the regular ones. So I picked those up for really cheap. One, two, three, four. I was able to get five of them. You can see how much more rare there was. I only got five of these, and with those, I got like 30 of them. 
um, for basically the same price. So, yeah, tons of Adam Fox. So <laughs> that's going to be a nice little stack there. Nice little investment. All right, next. What do we have next? Yeah, I've been picking up a few little cards on Com C when I see the opportunity. Because um, I'm selling $100, $200 in cards every day on there. <laughs> Taped a bunch of cards around this thing. It's probably going to damage the cards, but they're all just freebie cards. I think they just did that to you know, protect the card inside. Which is fine. I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to my old videos, I have a link to my eBay store, but I kind of, with the live streams, I just don't, I don't really link the store. I'm down on inventory right now. I had like a thousand items in my store back in May, and then it just dwindled down from there, and with the PSA orders taking so long. I, I've actually got one that's about to pop. Um, oh, there's a Trey Young in there. What the hell? Oop. Great, got tape stuck on it. <laughs> See if there's anything else good that was in there. Kevin Willis. Kevin Gamble. Oh, the new uh, the new hoop set's gonna have some of these throwback cards with the with the '90 hoops um, look to them. I thought that was kind of cool. Put this Trey Young in the sleeve. Second year Trey Young. Um. But yeah, we got a uh, John Stockton rookie card. I think he's still pretty under. Sorry about that, guys. Lost the stream there for a second. Um, but yeah, we got John Stockton. I still think he's undervalued. Um, PSA 8s on this card are like 50 bucks. The 9s are like 150 I think. And you can get them raw for like 20 30 bucks. So John Stockton. He has the most assists um, all time by a long shot. Uh, second is uh, Jason Kidd, I believe. And then the all-time steals leader as well. And I then, then I do believe um, Jason Kidd is number two as well. Um, but he's he's way up there. I don't know if he's going to get passed anytime soon. Um, we just don't have the same defensive play that we had back in the 90s. Jordan was number three, just to give you an idea. Um, and Jordan, you know, wasn't known as a defensive player, but he did win Defensive Player of the Year, and he really knew how to steal the ball. <laughs> um, yeah, we got a Tim Duncan Finest Rookie. I've been selling the 10s on this for over $200, and they've been literally, like, popping and I had a I had one ten up for sale for like months and months and just didn't sell, and then they started popping and now they've like I'm selling out of them. I got some more at PSA and then I picked up a few more if I can still get them for under twenty bucks. But they're starting to go over that mark where I'm probably going to be done buying those. But I I had a really nice stack of those and got them all back from PSA and whatnot. And uh, did pretty good on him. I got a bunch of, I think I had like seven, eight tens come back. 19th Vintage, what's going on? Uh, let's see. For all the people who sell cards, plain white envelope with tracking is live. Very cool, yeah. I've seen that, I've heard about that, so that's pretty cool. I don't think I'm going to be doing any of that because I mostly just sell graded cards online. But we got, we got a bunch of cards in here. Wow, I only paid 70 bucks <laughs> for this lot. I got them all in card savers. Really nice. You want that's a good way to protect cards right there. You got card savers. Cards are in sleeves. They got cardboard around it. Nothing's going anywhere. Um, mainly, I bought it for these Charizards. I'm getting them for like ten bucks a piece. We got three, four, five, six of them. So that's sixty dollars right there. And then everything else cost me another ten bucks. We got the Alakazam. I really like that artwork. He was not in Sun and Moon at all. Alakazam. I really like this one. Unfortunately, that one's off-centered. And then we got some other Dreadnoughts. Not really a big deal. Alchemy. Some of these are like $1 cards, $2 cards. So I did pretty good, and then we got the Suspicious Food Tin. Really nice. I sent one of these into uh, PSA just for kind of a joke, but gold card. I don't know if that's worth 5 bucks, 7 bucks, something in there. So we did pretty good on that. Grab some more packages here. 
Yeah, I used to do the whole plain white envelope shipping on cards, but I started just sending them off to ComC, and I've I've already done like fifteen thousand something dollars on ComC, so I have no plans on going back to selling selling you know low dollar cards on eBay. It just isn't worth it to me. Spend all that time. Oh, man, this is in a really thick case. What's going on here? Um, the Pokemon cards, i uh, that's kind of my roots. Um, Pokemon cards, you don't have to worry about the card prices fluctuating based on the performance. Um, and then you don't have to worry. And, and then the cards, are they go up so fast. Like, Take, for instance, Hidden Fates, which came out a year ago. Those cards have moved so much. It's like, if I'm grading a card, uh, let's say, like, this Charizard, these are, like, 9 10 bucks, 12 bucks on the market right now. PSA 10s are, like, 130 150 Once I get these back in, like, 10 months, that could be, like, two $300, you know, and the Raws could be, like, 20 30 bucks again. So the the swings and the movements are so good on this stuff um, that uh, it's just it's a no-brainer. Um, we got Kareem. Really nice. I've been trying to get the 72 for a while. They didn't have really good photos on this. I'm kind of just shooting for the 6 range. Obviously, if I got like a 7, I would be pretty excited. Even a 5 on this card is up over $100. Um, if you're going to buy these raw, buy them from a, you know, a reputable seller that has a lot of vintage stuff. Let's see here. And the other one is the Artist Gilmore Rookie. I've been trying to pick this up as well. So, nice cards. These are going into the PC once I get them graded. I think I paid... I got a steal on that one, like 60 bucks or something. This one was... I don't even... 30 40 50 Pretty much top to bottom off centered. But nice, pretty sharp looking card. I think five's at worst on those with, you know, potential six. I've been buying all the Basketball Hall of Famers that I can get my hands on, specifically the rookie cards. And for somebody like Kareem, I, I'm just trying to get every one of his cards. Um, but thanks for the question, Almighty. Um, yeah, I, there's just so much money in Pokemon, um, and there's so there's so much going on with uh, it's being it's the 25th uh, anniversary this year. So you got that set coming out. You got Shining, um, Shining Fates coming out. You can't even get this stuff. I mean, it's just so hard to get. I pre-ordered a lot of it. Um, Shining Fates is going to be probably just like Hidden Fates, which is just crazy. And I'll be picking up singles as soon as that, as soon as those hit the market, and they're at a price where I feel like it's, you know, a good price. I'll be buying up as many as I can because uh, there's going to be some really good opportunities there. Uh, let's see here. Man, this is really in there. Okay, we got another Lafreniere. Uh, another canvas. So another one I picked up probably around the same time. Um, I think I got two of these, and then I got another two that just showed up. So really, really nice. Like I said, go look at this card on eBay and a PSA 10. <laughs> I think the cheapest one was like $1,700, $1,800. Those will be going express, so I'll get those back in about a month, maybe five weeks. So if I get these out the door by the end of January, beginning of March, they should come back. Thank you for the purchase. Drop us some feedback, blah, blah, blah. They got plenty of uh, cardboard on there. My only worry when they do it like this is accidentally hitting the card. All right, we got some... I ordered these from Japan. I got three. I, I've already sent like 10, 12 of these off to um, PSA. But I really like um, I really like this card. Really, I like these amazing rares in general. Um, they're a little bow. That's not going to hurt them at all. Uh, this will be in the um, Shining Fate set for English. Um, but these are like... Six, seven, eight dollars right now. These Jap Japanese ones, just a steal for a card like this. And I'm not sure what the you know what the English side is going to do on these, but 
I really like the Kyogre. Um, and then second, I like this Reshi Ram. Just really nice colors. I mean, you really got to look at the artwork of a card when you're kind of looking at, you know, the potential of a card. How, you know, how is that going to fare? How is it going to hold up over the years? And I think with these amazing rares, they're only going to make so many of them, and then they're going to be done with them, and people are going to look back, you know, and really want those cards, so. All right, let's grab some more packages here. Got some more Charizards. Like I said, I'm picking up as many of these as I can. Um, I think I got probably close to 50 of them right now. Ready to go out to PSA. And how many have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. So I probably paid 80 to 100 dollars for these. Some of them had the issue where they were cut. They were cut wrong and then the back has chipping. You can see how it flares up there. Um, yeah, two out of eight of them. Looks like we're cut kind of crap. But the rest of them are good. And that's just a matter of having good centering on these. Left to right, top to bottom. This one's a little top to bottom. But even nines on those, I think they're like 50, 60 bucks. So, you're going to make money no matter what. Uh, yeah, I do have Pokemon Goals. Thanks for asking. Um, I have the original Fossil set. That was the original one that I put together um, back in 2017. I bought the booster boxes for like $1,400 a piece. They're, I, I, who knows what those are going for now. They're like probably twenty grand or something. Um, so, I have that set complete and PSA 10. Besides the Lapras, I still need the Lapras Hollow. Um, it was just tough. I, I still don't have it. I have a 9 of it. Other than that, I have every card in the set in a 10. And it's like, I can't remember. I looked up, I think it was like forty over 40 grand last time I checked all the prices on it. Um, and then the Jungle first edition set, I have, what, 80, 90% of that. So I'm still putting that together. There's a couple hollows I need. I also like the no symbol rarity, or the or the no jungle symbol, uh, ra um, era cards. I I'm getting all 16 of those. Uh, PSA eight nine condition, right around there. Um, and then Team Rocket first edition. I'm putting that set together, which is what, 83 cards. Um, we got a Jerry West. Picked this up for pretty dirt cheap. This is the, is it the 75, 74, 1974 Jerry West. I think this was, this might have been his last card. Um, got it for like 15 bucks or something. Uh, let's see. And then, so, the first, the non, after base set, you had Jungle Fossil, you had Team Rocket, you had base set two. So I'm putting those three together, and then I have the, um, and they got plastic on this, and it's like harder than hell to rip through this crap. Uh, a set that a lot of people didn't like because it was a re uh, another reprint set, like base set two was a legendary collection. And I have the reverse hollow um, set. Of, there's 110 cards. I have all. I have 109 out of 110. I'm just missing the Gengar, um, which you guys will see in here. I bought another one. Uh, I got two at PSA right now. I'm just trying to get that card in nine. And then I, that set's complete. I think I priced that set around 20, 25,000, something like that. Um, so those are the four main sets. And then as far as new stuff, I have, you know, the Hidden Fates. I have all the shiny GX cards from Hidden Fates. Um, and the gold cards. And then, so like the, the new stuff, I try to get the rarest of rare stuff. And I try to put those sets together. Um, but with the with my old vintage stuff, I'm going for um, the stuff I just mentioned. Uh, and then eventually I'll probably get into like the Neo sets. and um, They're all just going through the moon, so it's it's tough. I might just go for the hollows on those. And then Sky Ridge. I started collecting the Sky Ridge hollows, but 
I ended up selling them off because there's over 30 of them and I just kind of <clears throat> I really lost interest but it was it was getting to be expensive so I decided to sell them use that money for other cards and, and the other sets I was putting together but yeah we got Connor McMichael that's pretty much why I bought these those are just kind of throw-ins D-Man Vlogs or what's going on uh, ch -ch -ch, base set at Premiere. Um, I'm not that young. I'm in my 30s. Um, I, I was not into Pokemon until 2017, January of 2017. I never bought cards as a kid or as a young adult or anything. Um, I just didn't have any interest in Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I've been a reseller for years. Um, and there was a guy in a reseller group um, that was talking about Pokemon cards and how he was grading Pokemon cards, selling them, making money. Um, and a lot of the people in the, um, the chat were kind of throwing his idea down. Like, well, you got you send them off to get graded and then two months later and then your money's like tied up and blah, blah, blah. So I was in interestingly interested um, and I started buying, I bought some cards from Walmart, kind of, uh, instantly got hooked, um, took the dive, started, started doing the PSA thing, and I haven't really looked back since, and it was probably that year, maybe later in the year, I started buying some sports cards, man, they got this, like, how the heck did they get this in there, um, mainly I was buying Jordan cards, because I was a huge Jordan fan. Uh, I bought some Kobe, I bought Kobe rookies for like a few bucks a piece, like all that for one card. Okay, Bowen Byram. That is what I mean about this. The cards are so sensitive on those dark edges. So, but yeah, that's how I got into Pokemon and um, just cards and collecting. The uh, European, I think I bought one box of um, Collector's Choice, which was like a European edition. So the cards were slightly different. So I, I have a few of them. Um, whoa, what, just extra piece of cardboard in there? <laughs> Okie dokie then. But yeah, I, I don't specifically collect those cards. I just... Whatever I get my hands on. But I had a pretty pretty large Jordan collection and I sold most of it like a year ago. We got another one. So we got all three of them that showed up today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Biggest thing is the corners, edges on these. And then the bottom with that like red. So they're all looking pretty, pretty nice. So hopefully we get some tens on those. That's gonna be big money. My plan on those is to buy, to get them graded, flip them, and then start buying some more stuff for um, express grading to where I can send the cards in and get them back a month later. Instead of having to wait 10 months, I can uh, get my money like working for me a lot quicker. Um, it's just something we're going to be doing to really, to really get this thing going. Um, what do we got here? Santa, but okay, this is a super rare Jordan. I was almost contemplating uh, expressing this out because it's a pretty sick card. I mean, it's not not necessarily sick, but it's pretty rare. <laughs> the uh, super rare vari variation, which I paid like thirty five dollars for it. I, th I thought I got a steal on it, man. All right, let's see here. So. See at the bottom, it's got that 473. These are the rarest of rare. Um, this one's looking really, really sharp. Really nice. Corners, edges. This edge is infamous for having the chipping, which it doesn't. Yeah, that's looking like a 10. Uh, he's got the Santa belt on. So it's, yeah, it's the super rare. I have not pulled a single super rare and I opened 22 boxes. So you got him with the Santa belt. 
Boba Shet has the Christmas lights around the neck instead of the regular necklace. And then Bo um, Lewis Robert also has the Christmas lights around. His car is now pushing 300 bucks. Uh, the Bichettes, I was picking those up for 50 to 70. Uh, uh, selling cars, blah, blah, blah. So. so I sell the graded stuff on eBay. Um, and the stuff that I don't end up grading it if it doesn't check out, I'll send that to Comc, C O M C. Um, and I'm selling a few thousand dollars a month on there. Um, so that's that's a nice avenue. I mean, I know there's StockX, and that's like a big thing now with rookie cards where you can send them in, and but they're grading your cards. So if you if I'm sending a card into them that I wouldn't grade with PSA because I think it's like an eight, maybe a nine. Maybe they don't give it a good grade. Maybe they call it like a B tier. So it won't go for as much money or whatever. Or, you know, I can basically, I can get market value out of the cards anyways on Comsey and they sell fast. Um, so that's just where I say, oh my God, look at all this hair and fuzz all over that. That really looks good. That's one of my pet peeves. And people send like cards and it's got like all this like pet hair and gunk all over it. Or they use a top loader that's like 30 years old and it's all yellowed out. I'm allergic to cats and dogs, so. It's like get dog hair and crap all over the place. All right, we got another, see what I mean? Hair. <laughs> uh, another Peyton Krebs. I know how it is though, the top loader is just just attract all the dust and everything. We still got another probably 12 packages to go here. Batman cards. Yeah, <laughs> Batman cards. I just sold a, um, a Stan Lee uh, uh, Marvel Universe. I was buying the Marvel, Mar Marvel Universe, the 1990. Um which is the first Marvel Universe set, so they consider them like the rookie cards. I was getting those boxes for like 100 bucks like last year, and um, I just sold the Stan Lee for like 40 bucks, and it was like an $8 card, $10 card maybe, like a few months ago. So, cards like that just have so much, so much upside potential. What did they do with this thing? <laughs> Jesus. Put all this crap in there and then they tape it and then you can't even pull the darn thing out, man. Ugh, man. It smells like... It smells like smoke. Two Tyrus Raymond Cobb. I have no idea who that is. So we got some, uh... Julius Irving. These are the... Let me see. Hmm. Cards, cards of this era are really... They can soak up smells, but they have that old top smell, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, these are the 78s of the Julius Irving. Pretty cheap. I got these for a steal. A couple of these look... That one looks really good. That one's way off-centered. So, a couple decent ones in there. Julius Irving... Another rookie I'd like to get, but it's so far up there in price. Yeah, old library. <laughs> That's one of the tests, you know, just see if it's a, a legit card, but I don't think you can really duplicate that or the texture of the card. So we got some more Charizards. Probably another like five of them or something. These ones are still in the plastic. Some people just don't even take them out of the plastic. Backs look good. Centering looks good. That one's a little top to bottom. So. Send them in. If I get a handful of nines and a bunch of tens, I will be quite happy. So, really nice. That's a card, like, when it first came out, if you would have sent it off express, got it up for sale, like within a month of like it even coming out 
you know, you could have sold the PSA 10 for probably a pretty, pretty good stack of cash. What do we have here? So this is one of the tall boy cards. I've been picking up the Hall of Famers from 69, 70. Um, so we'll get into this in a second here. I've just been getting them. I, I mean, are they going to go up in, in price? Who knows? They're Hall of Famers. I think they're going to age well. Gus Johnson, PSA 8. Not sure what I paid on this. I'd have to look. Might have been under 100 bucks. This is an old style case. You got that Collector's Universe like sticker hologram on there. This is like pre-2000 probably. I got some perfect fix some perfect fit sleeves for these coming because I've got quite a few now. Shining Fates Allocations. Um, I, I pre-ordered, um, so I'll get them because I got them from, from GameStop. You're gonna, you're like, they're going to get me my product, but it's, it's a matter of if it's going to come on time. Like, uh, they might be late again. Like, Champion's Path, I got the ETBs, uh, I got the ETBs of Champion's Path, and they showed up like a month late, um, actually it was like six weeks late, so I was pretty, pretty disappointed on that, let me just, ugh, Jesus, but yeah, we're, we're gonna get some uh, Shining Fates, it's just a question of, of when it's gonna actually show up. And I'll pr probably be out searching for cards, so if I hit, hit any stores and they're stocking the shelves, I'm, I'm going to get some for sure. I think it's just going to be it's going to be like everything else where it's just really, really tough to get. Um, looks like probably another 69 tops graded card in here. They got it all like taped up with some comic stuff there. Jojo White. So if you guys read the um, the title of this video, um, I bought this card from the guy. And when I got it in the mail, I noticed um, the bottom had like a red spot on it. Like a, it almost looked like a marker or something marked the card. And I, I didn't remember that when I purchased the card. Um, so I went and looked when I was going to look at it and leave feedback and everything. I was like, wait a minute. When I bought this card, it didn't have this on it. And I looked at the cert number, and it wasn't even the same cert number. Um, and they were a pretty big seller, so I was like, hey, I got this card, and it's got this red stop spot on it. It's not it's not even the same card that was in the photos. Um, and uh, the guy uh, said, oh, you know, that was my bad. He said it was somebody commissioned the card or whatever, and they sold it for him. And they probably got two of cards from the person and the cert number was like one off from the other one so they just forgot to change the scan and image and stuff but we worked out a deal where I just sent the card back and then he sent me a replacement that was basically from his own collection um, and I was fine with that otherwise I was just going to return it and then just buy one from someone else but Jojo White he went in the Hall of Fame in 2015 and he passed away in 2018 Jojo White and this was like 80, 90 bucks. So pretty good deal for Hall of Famer. And it's a PSA 8, so PSA 8's a pretty solid grade for cards of that area. Uh, I don't have the 69 L Cinder, um, Kareem. I, I want to get it, but it's so freaking expensive. Um, Ty Cobb, I have no idea. Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, there's going to be multiple waves of the Shining Fates. Um, it's like everything else. But I think like Hidden Fates is going to be hard to find it, regardless of what wave or, or whatnot. It's just going to be tough to get it. I'll pretty much open what I got pre-ordered. If I find any in the store, I'll pick it up. And then other than that, I'm just going to be buying singles. Um, obviously, the big chase card is going to be the Charger. Max, the shiny one. That's going to be hundreds of dollars even raw for that card. 
what on earth do they do? But yeah, I think that's gonna be the big set of the year. <sighs> how do you how do they expect somebody to get a card out of here? Like look at this. They got this like foam and then they like taped it up with tape. And then I guess there's a okay, this is probably a Charizard. Let me just see here. Like I get it, they're protecting the card, but now it's like gonna take me ten minutes to get into it. Um so we got Charizard one there, and then there's two more in there. We're not even gonna bother getting them out right now. I'll do it later. Actually, can I just put my finger on it? There we go. Yeah, we can just slide it right out through the top. Durr! I'm a dummy. Yeah, the only, uh, some of the Hall of Famers I, I, um, I don't have yet are, um, obviously the Lewis Elsinder rookie card I'd love to get. Um, oh, they got it really in there. Um, Pete Maravich, um, and the 61 top, the 61 Fleer cards, you know, um. There's some guys in there that are just so expensive. Pretty much any of the Hall of Famers from that era are going to be pretty pricey. So I don't have any of those yet, but eventually one day I'll probably get them all. It just depends how the market, if the market just keeps going up like crazy. And the problem right now is you got all these investors coming in that are buying cards and they're pushing the market so fast because um, people are buying shares of the cards and then. So it doesn't matter what they get the card for, they sell all the shares for the card, and then if the card goes up so much or whatever, and then a few years later they sell the card off, everybody gets a profit. I'm sure they make a pretty good amount of money in there too. Um, got another Peyton Krebs. Got quite a few of these. Um, those will be going out with the next PSA order here. Which is uh, ultra modern. I got an ultra modern order. I got a Pokemon order. I got a modern order. Um, and then I got the express order. So I'm going to have like four orders going out this month. Bob McAdoo. Oh, got a little freebie card in here. I'm like, wait, why is there two cards? Connie Hawkins. Hmm. No idea that is. If anybody knows Connie Hawkins, 73 tops card here. Uh, Suns fans, thrilling moment in 71. 35 foot shot at a buzzer to give the Suns double overtime victory. Interesting. Wow, he was averaging 26, 30 points a game. Dang. Connie Hawkins. No idea. Um, but the Bob McAdoo, he's in the Hall of Fame. So I picked that one up. Got a really good deal on it. Probably around the PSA 6 range. These cards are just getting more and more expensive as people are kind of like catching on to the whole Hall of Fame thing. Um, I don't have a 57. I don't have any cards like older than the 69 Tops basketball. I don't have any of the 57s or the... 61s or anything like that. Cards I'd love to have, but they're just so darn expensive. I missed the boat on the 86 Fleer Jordan. I just didn't pull the trigger. I didn't want to tie up that much money. Uh, we got a Kareem. 74 Kareem. Probably in the PSA 5 range. Just tough cards to get. I mean, even get a nice copy of that card is tough. All right, this package I signed for, where did it come from? New York. Let's see what we got here. Okay. That's a big bubble mailer.
Wow. Padded flat rate, bubble mailer, another bubble mailer. <laughs> and then what's going to be inside that bubble mailer? Oh, okay. I know what this is. Cool. Got some Jordans. Um, this is his Arcade of Excellence. Kind of like a, it's a throwback, 86 clear. I buy these, I grade them, I sell them. Pretty good money in these. I think we got one that fell out of the... I think the 10s are all the way up to like 350 bucks now. On these. Pretty sure it's the same seller I've been buying these from for a few years now. And I got like 10 or 12 PSA 10s on one order. Made a few grand. Uh, yeah, older cards with low pop. Yeah, I just go for the Hall of Famer. You know, rookie cards. Which back, back in the day, you, you had basically one rookie card um, of a player, you know. Whether it be the tops or the Fleer or whatever. That's kind of the nice thing about basketball. With baseball, you got, like, like I just watched a video on that. The 1980s uh, rookie cards for baseball players. So this is a card we were talking about, the, the Gengar. Um, paid a few hundred bucks for this card, but in a 10, or sorry, in a 9. Uh, in a 9, this is like... Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars. The last one went for. So it's the only card I, I need to finish my set. And it every time it came up for sale last year, I just didn't. I didn't. I didn't get it. Last time it was at auction. It was not the last time, but it was at auction, and I was trying to get it from the guy, and he wouldn't sell it. And then it just ended up some other guy snagged it. I, it sucked. So this one looked pretty solid. This one was infamous for having like the corners or it had that like little fuzzy corner cut. But other than that, the card looked pretty flawless. So I'm just crossing my fingers. I got two of them at PSA right now. They went out on an economy order, I think back in like July. So they, they, they should pop pre pretty quick here. Um, but because of the value, I'm probably just gonna send this out because they're not doing economy anymore. I'm just going to express this one out. Making sure there's nothing going on here. So I just, I love this, this artwork. I love the fireworks. Um, some people don't like it for whatever reason, but. Really, really nice. One little scratch there. Hopefully that's not a little tiny little indent right there. Might come back in eight. Um, but we'll see. It's a risk. Um, but the nine is just so freaking expensive now. I don't really want to drop $1,500 on that card. Got sports cards. What's going on? Got one package left. Looks like they shipped, they shipped this baby in a tin. And is it Hidden Fates 10? <laughs> that's one way, I guess that's one way to protect the cards. We got two more Charizards. Actually, I think there's three. Let's see here, or four. I've bought so many of these, I mean, it's... You buy two from one person, four from another, eight from another. looking pretty good a little bit top to bottom really the centering is the biggest issue on these and then sometimes they can get damaged inside of the plastic but yeah I like the card it's a promo card it's a Charizard you can only get it out of the um, Champions Path Elite trainer box I think it's I think it's a cool card I think it'll hold up long term so that's gonna be it for the video Chad what's going on bud
Haven't seen you in here, here in a while. Um, got a big stack of cards here to go through <laughs> for possible grading. That's going to take me a while. Gives me something to do on a Monday. Um, but yeah, this might be the last mail day for, for a little while. I don't know. Seems like when I get packages all at once and I don't get a whole lot for a few days or something. Um, hopefully we start finding some cards. We got some awesome sets coming out next month. We got Shining Fates. We got the Baseball Top Series 1. We got the Basketball NBA Hoops. It's just going to be a great month, I've, I feel like. Um, I did order some Baseball Series 1 hobby boxes. I think I paid like $120 a piece. So we're going to be cracking those open on the channel as soon as those come. Um, bought them from a pretty big seller. And I believe the the release on that's like February, February 9th or something like that. So... All that is to come. Make sure you're subscribed. Have your push bell notifications on. All that good stuff. Have a good week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.